Hi friends, I'm Ishwar and today I will show you how you can elevate your photographic game using the power of artificial intelligence with camera raw filter and Lightroom Classic. You can now automatically generate artificial depth maps or 3D estimation based on the content of an image. Just imagine being able to change the focus plane and create a narrow or shallow depth of field in a photograph with just few clicks. Are you curious to know how it works? Well, keep watching because I am going to walk you through every step of this exciting process. So right now, I have opened the image in Camera Raw. But friends, you can follow the same steps and achieve the same results in Lightroom Classic. Every step and every process is exactly the same, no matter which one you choose, no matter which software you are using. So here is the first step. Open up the Lens Blur panel. All you have to do is click Apply. Camera Raw Filter or Lightroom Classic will use AI technology to calculate a depth map. But here is the exciting part. The focus point is automatically applied to the subject in the image. The software is very very smart enough to recognize the subject and put it in focus for you. Now we are going to take this a step further and give you even more control over the final result by using the blur amount slider. Now this is where you can get creative and really make the image stand out. For example, do you want to create a dreamy ethereal look with a lot of blur or maybe you prefer a settler effect with just a hint of blur. The choice is yours. You can increase or decrease the amount of blur to your preferences. Lens blur has a fantastic feature that allows you to add bokeh to the image. The bokeh is that beautiful out of focus blur that you often see in professional photos and it can really make your image pop. But here you can choose from five different aperture shapes to customize the bokeh to your liking. How cool is that? You can create a soft dreamy background with a circular bokeh or go for a more edgy look with a hexagonal bokeh. The choice is yours. Lens blur also gives you the boost slider which allows you to tweak the effect to the perfection. You can use it to adjust the intensity of the bokeh and make it as subtle or as dramatic as you want. But here is a hint, in images without several bright light sources, the effect can be subtle. So don't be afraid to push the slider to the right to really make the bokeh stand out. But here is something to keep in mind. The bokeh effect is more noticeable in areas with small gaps and lighter points in the background. So pay attention to those areas and use the bokeh to your advantage to create a more visually interesting image. Okay, alright, so you have clicked the apply button in the lens blur panel and you have added some bokeh to the image. But now you want more control over the focus point. No problem, lens blur has got you covered. You can select the point or area focus icon to get the precision you need. When you click on an area in the image, like for example, the horse, it becomes in focus. That means that horse will be sharp and clear while rest of the image will have that beautiful bokeh blur. If you click or click and drag on the subject, then the main subject will be in focus and the horse or background will be blurred. But that's not all. You can also adjust the focus using the range bar. You can reposition the rectangle within the bar to change the focal area. And if you drag either edge of the rectangle, you can contract or expand the focal range. This gives you incredible flexibility and control over the focus in your image. Now I want you to imagine the possibilities you can create a shallow depth of field with just small area in focus or you can have a deep depth of field where most of the image is in focus. The choice is yours but here is something to keep in mind adjusting the focus point and focal range is an art. It takes practice and experimentation to get it just right. So don't be afraid to play around with the settings and see what works best for your image. Okay, all right, things are starting to look amazing. But what if you accidentally mess up the focal range? No worries. There is another cool feature that will reset the focal range. It's super easy. All you have to do is double click anywhere in the focal range bar. And that's it. And if you want to reset to the subject in the focus, 
just click on the subject focus icon and just like that your focal range will be reset to automatically generated depth map simple right and we are not done yet i have got another cool feature to show you which is visualize depth by enabling this option you will be able to see an overlay of the ai generated depth map right on your image this color overlay in the image corresponds to the colors in the focal range bar that means the areas within the focal range are displayed in white while yellow and purple represents areas outside of the focal range that will be blurred this feature is incredibly powerful because it allows you to see exactly what areas of your image will be in focus and what areas will be blurred and that means you can make more informed decisions about how to adjust the focal range to achieve the perfect depth of field but here is a hint pay close attention to the color overlay the more you experiment with the focal range the more you will understand how the colors correspond to the depth of field in your image and that knowledge will help you take your photo editing skills to the next level okay let's hide the overlay and then we can preview the effects of lens blur using this eye icon to toggle between the before and after so you have applied lens blur and you have created a stunning depth of field effect but when you zoom in you notice that some areas like hair need a little bit of touch up so no problem that's where lens blur two refinement tools the focus and blur brush comes into play you can use the amount slider to adjust the strength of the blur or focus this is where you get to decide how much blur or focus you want to apply to specific area of your image you can also change the brush size and feather or the softness of the brush edge this gives you incredible control over the final results and the flow slider is another powerful tool that will adjust the speed at which the brush applies the adjustment so if you lower the flow amount it enables a slower build up of the effect this is perfect for those areas that need a very very subtle or minute touches and here is a hint the auto mask option can help automatically detect edges based on the contrast and color when painting i will start with a small brush and paint on the left side of the hair to focus on this area but the focus amount is too much and it is very sharp no problem even though i have already painted in that area i can still adjust the amount slider and if you ever paint over an area and want to erase the refinement you can hold option on mac or alt on windows and paint over the area you can continue to add additional brush strokes anywhere in the image that need the same amount of blur now even though i have made multiple brush strokes at this point i can still adjust the blur amount and it will update all of the area that i just i have just painted but if i want to apply a different amount of blur to another area in the image then i will click the plus icon ending the previous painting session and committing those edits into the depth map then i will start painting over the new area and now when i return to the panel to adjust the amount of blur the only blur that's being adjusted is over that area all right let's enable the visualize depth map it which allows us to view these refinements that we have made to the depth map and we can adjust the amount of blur and even paint with this overlay showing all right let's hide the overlay and zoom out and if we ever wanted to remove all of the refinements we could always click on reset all now let's use the eye icon to view the image without lens blur and with lens blur applied before we wrap up there are three important things to keep in mind first it's worth noting that lens blur works best when it's enhancing the existing blur in your photos so if you have a photo with some natural blur in the background lens blur can help to enhance that and make your subject stand out more second any healing that you apply to the image will be applied to the unblurred image healing will not affect the areas that you have blurred using the lens blur it means 
that for the best results you should apply healing with the lens blue turned off. Third, if you have any AI generated mask like subject or sky or object, they may need to be updated after applying or adjusting the lens blur options. And finally, this version of lens blur is labeled as early access. It can provide good results with a well-defined subject, foreground and background. And Adobe team didn't want to hold the feature back, but if the lens blur results aren't working at level that you expect it to, please use the feedback option to share your comments as the team continues to improve the AI and machine learning model for your lens blur. That's all for this video friends. If you enjoyed the content, please hit the subscribe button and give it a like. Have any questions or feedback, leave them in the comments text section. Stay tuned for the next video and until next time, take care. Happy editing.